Welcome to the Aim High Podcast. Good day, High Flyer. Do you want to get into real estate but don't know where to start? Do you wonder how others are living rent-free? Our guest today is Yasser Hattab. He's the property captain. Yasser is an airline pilot and an investor. He started back in 2001 investing in real estate and he had some issues along the way, to say the least. Find out how he started in real estate and how he bounced back with a vengeance and how working with others helped him to grow in the space. Find out all of that and more today, where we provide real estate investors with the tools to achieve generational wealth. Welcome to the Aim High Podcast. I'm your host, Bud Evans. Good day, High Flyers, and welcome to the Aim High Podcast. I have a surprise for you today. This is going to be a pleasure for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I am with the property captain, my friend Yasser Hatab today. Yasser, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me, brother. It is an absolute pleasure, man. Anytime we get to talk is a great day in my book. Yasser, you and I know each other very well. Would you do me a favor and give me a quick introduction? Yeah, Yasser Atab, thank you for the amazing introduction for me. Yasser Atab, property captain. I'm an airline captain for Delta Airlines and been in business for real estate business since 2001 the end of 2001 been in it ever since the whole nine yards, man. I, I did it all. I started off the same way. Everybody talking about you know, passive income and flips and all that stuff. And here I am today, man. I'm just grateful to be here, brother. Awesome, man. It's good to have you. Absolutely good to have you. So Yasser, you've been doing this for a while, right? I know you've had a couple of stops, a couple of starts, but how did you get into real estate? Oh man. <laughs> just like by accident, actually, I knew, well, as out of, it was out of necessity, really. I wanted to be a pilot. That's how I, I got into real estate. I knew that I needed the money to get into flight training, to build up my hours and to get to become an airline pilot, because that was my aspiration since I was a kid, actually. I was like three years old playing around with the airplanes. I was one of those kids. Eventually, I was like, hey, what was the best way to... to build up the capital for this and to pay for my flight training. So I found real estate. I started off the same way, just like everybody else. There was no YouTube at that time, unfortunately. So it's a lot easier now. I started off with my real estate license in New York. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, got associated with a broker. After that closed my first deal and then took my commission and just dumped it right into a, a rental property. And that's how I started. Nice. That was right after 2000, right after 9-11. So let's talk about that first deal. Do you remember all the details about it? Oh man, so we're walking down memory lane at this point, but yeah, I do remember the excitement behind the closing. It was, and then obviously the nerves of steel, right? I was very nervous. I'm like, am I doing the right thing here? I had no guidance. I just said, Hey, let me go out there and get something took the first commission and then the deal, I found it through one of the newspapers actually in Pennsylvania. I was in New York at that time. I remember looking at potential rental properties with my father in Wilkes Bar, Scranton area of Pennsylvania. We're looking at all these like newspapers and those flyers and ads. This is before all the stuff like Zillow and all that. And I found the property out in Erie, Pennsylvania on the lake, beautiful property. It looks like it was going through some kind of financial distress. The property needed some work. It wasn't anything too bad or anything like that. Um, ended up driving out there <laughs> for, it was like a nine hour drive. And uh, I don't think I would ever do that again, but it was a learning curve. I went out there, met up with the owner, nice old guy who's going through. Sure enough, I was confirmed that it was a foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So I bought my first foreclosure with with my, uh, with my first commission. The funny part is I actually did not tell anybody anything about what I was doing, not even my own family. I was li living with my parents at that time at 18 years old. Yeah. They had no idea where I was. I just told them I was going on a trip with my friends. All my knucklehead friends were going to Atlantic city. I was going out to Erie, Pennsylvania to buy a property. <laughs> nice. So the property needed around like 15 grand worth of work. It wasn't too bad. It needed a new roof, which I ended up doing it myself. It's that whole 
being a technician versus a being a manager or an entrepreneur like the E-Myth, right? Yeah. But I, I was like, you know, what better way to learn than by doing it myself? So I stayed out there and started working and then getting help and then working a little bit more. So lo and behold, six months later, we finally have our 15 grand renovation done. Then I rented it out. The property came with a small boat, very small boat. It was like talking like a 12 footer or something and two jet skis. So, cause it had a dock and stuff. Rented it out. This is before VRBO and Airbnb and all that. So I rented it out in a local newspaper as a vacation rental with, with a dock and access to the water and then started cash flowing from there, man. It was an awesome experience. Would I do it again? I would never work on a property again myself. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Especially you had. The way. Yeah, you've done it over and over again, just differently. Just different. Yeah. And very close to where I am. Not yeah. Really. And the technology helps. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you, what are you currently working on? What current projects do you have? Oh man, my partner and I right now, we're focused mainly on commercial multifamily. Mm -hmm getting away we're in new jersey but we're getting away from the northeast area and buying stuff in other markets like iowa and stuff in florida we're currently working right now on a five unit that we're looking to pick up it's in clearwater florida and the exit strategy for that would be a midterm rental to travel nurses that's right not that far away from a hospital so we're already in talks with the hospital and trying to see how we could cash flow a little bit more than a, a long-term rental. Uh, but we also, we ran it as a long-term rental and it was still cash flow as a long-term rental, but we're, we want to, obviously we want the icing on the cake. So sure. we're going to increase our cash flow with the midterm rental on that. So yeah, that's what we're working on right now. Great, man. And that's the benefit of having the midterm rental. So one thing, if I'm looking at a midterm or a short-term rental, I won't touch it unless it does cash flow as a long-term because having the experience of being a mayor, you can, with the, just the touch of a pen, create an ordinance and it's gone. You can no longer do that kind of stuff. So yeah, a great way to make sure that you're covered, covering your assets and then getting that extra income with the midterm is fantastic. Absolutely. It always has to work as a rental just in case. Yeah. Now, yeah, sir. I know you are all over, like you have such a breadth of knowledge, but what would you say is your niche? My niche is a couple of my mentors coined a term for me. I'm the guy that you come to when stuff hits the fan. All right. And we won't talk about that stuff, but I'm a, I work on creative solutions, win. Usually people look at win-win or win-lose. I look at a win, I want everybody to win in a transaction. Right. So I'm the type of guy that an investor that comes out, looks at the whole scenario. I guess that comes from my airline pilot perspective at 37,000 yeah. feet. I look at the higher picture the from above, above you. And I look for scenarios that kind of work for everybody. It may be a little bit outside the box, but it works and it helps and I find the right people to get those things done. So yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. It's good to be the guy that knows the guy instead of being the guy himself. You don't want to be the electrician, but you want to know about 10 or 12 of them so that when you're doing your actual turns, you know, that works. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what's on the horizon? So currently right now. I'm looking to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. It's all about giving back at the end of the day. I remember there was a lot of mentors that got me to where I'm at right now, including my first mentor when I was 18 years old. I want to be that guy for people now. New investors coming into the market, into the industry. It's a very attractive industry, but it's also a very unforgiving industry. Uh, if you, so I want to be that guy that kind of cuts all the fluff out and give back to the next generation of investors and realtors and real estate professionals in general, even as a former appraiser, that 
that kind of comes into play as well. So I want to be the guy that leaves a legacy and cut all the fluff out and give you the tools and, and everything necessary to accelerate your career and your entrance into the business correctly. Pair that up with actually having how to run a business correctly and how to actually build it up from the ground up correctly is are two of my passions. My partner and my, I have students as well, and my students know this about me. My, my long-term goal, my life purpose is to create a thousand millionaires. And so I'm not going to just do that by myself. I'm going to teach people, my key players to be able to teach others as well. How I get benefit from that is my legacy. I want to leave this planet knowing that I made a thousand millionaires, whether directly or, or indirectly. Awesome. That's terrific, man. And uh, as, and I'm just going to put it out there. I'm, I send people to you, dude, all the time, because if there's somebody that I want to learn from, it's you. And it's a pleasure working with you and knowing you and actually having people that we interact with daily. It's, it's. A genuine pleasure. Thank you, man. Feelings mutual, brother. Yeah, thank you, man. So what is one thing that you learned as you increase your wealth? Man, that's a good question. What I learned was it's not who you know. It's who knows you, All right? And what I mean by that is essentially if you're known for something, be that person right? Let people know who you are, how you could provide value to them. And it's also about getting the message out, right? And letting them know that how can we help them out? So for example, if I see someone that is regardless of their level in real estate, if they're brand new or they've done thousands of deals like us, you know, what you really want to look at is Someone's going to always have some kind of problem that they're having. Being able to be that person to help them out with their problem puts you lifetimes ahead of everybody else in their circle. But that's part of, that, that's part of being known for who you are and not knowing someone else. You see what I mean? Yeah. So it's not about who you know, it's who knows you and what you could provide to them. And that's something I learned in 22 years in business, this is literally, literally where I've learned. It was the hard way. I learned the hard way. And, and we always say, we joke about, ask me how I know, right? Ask me how I know I, how, all about this. And it's all about value, guy. It's all about value. Um, I could solve a problem for, let's say, for someone, an entrepreneur that has a human resources issue, managing their team. Well, I could provide my team to teach their team how to run it correctly. Mm -hmm. And I don't want anything in return. I just want to see a fellow entrepreneur do well. And so that's one of the most valuable things I've ever learned. Yeah, sir. I got to say just one of those unwritten rules. I don't call people and say, Hey dude, let's grab a coffee. I want to pick your brain. <laughs> so it's like, I just made a phone call. We're always looking to get to that next level. I just reached out to someone who's at a higher level than I am. And I said, Hey. I noticed that you have this going on within your company. I believe that I can add value by doing this and this. Would you like to jump on a 15 minute call so I can explain some more? Then he showed up on the podcast. I'm looking forward to that one coming out. That should be out next week. As of the taping, January 30th today, it'll be out on Monday. I love that. Yeah. Because it's one of the other things behind it too, is that every single dollar I've ever made in business was because of someone else or with someone else. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to make a cash offer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Where in reality, you should be really focusing on two things, your knowledge and your relationships. Those two things are going to make or break who you are, not just only as a real estate investor, but as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is if you could do those two things and apply it to other businesses, go ahead and do it, you know, but that's literally the core, the two core things that you need to have in order to be successful in business. Yeah, man. Hey, great segue. Listen, we're going to talk about entrepreneurism right now. Good day, High Flyers. Do you need help with your business? 
We can help you get out of a jam or even get you started in real estate. Check us out at BudEvans.com. Are you ready to take your real estate investment sky high? Aim High REI is the perfect Facebook community for you. Get answers from experienced investors, connect with other motivated individuals, and benefit from valuable resources all in one place. If that sounds like something that interests you, join our amazing network today and we will help elevate your investing journey beyond what you think is possible. Simply search Aim High REI on Facebook. Thanks. Now back to the show. We're going to move into the soaring four. These are the same four questions that I ask every guest so that we can help someone just starting out achieve new heights. Are you ready? Yep. Go okay. ahead. All right. What is one thing that you use to keep you motivated? Oh, man. My people. <laughs> when I'm, at, I'm in a position right now where I'm mentoring people. And so, you know, a lot of people that don't realize that even as a mentor, someone who's leaving a legacy and turning a thousand people into millionaires, they hold you accountable too. Yeah. To stay motivated, I look at the people around me, whether they're my students or my partners or even my own mentors, right? So what keeps me motivated is making sure that I'm always keeping my word with my people. That gets me up at night. That puts me to sleep at night, knowing that I got it, I got it figured out and I got it covered and I kept my word. So that's definitely the most motivation I could ever get. No book. You won't find that in any book. I'll tell you that. <laughs> True. All right. What is one thing that you learned that completely changed your mindset? Man, I think I answered this before. It's all about who am I going to help, right? Who's going to benefit from something that I provide and every single dollar I have ever made or will make, right. Is because of someone or with someone else. Nobody does it alone in business ever. So you want to come up, you come up correctly with other people. It's that abundance mindset. It's huge. That's like the most required thing ever. Yeah. I had Steven Trang, who's like a huge Love player, right? Love Steve Trang. And we just started the sales disruptors and we were on a, this podcast, he came on, it did me the pleasure of coming on. And he said exactly the same thing. The abundance mindset versus that mindset of scarcity, having that abundant mindset that there's enough to go around. And you and I talk about this all the time, right? All the time, bud. Collaboration over competition, <laughs> brother. Always. You, it's funny. You're in a neighboring County in yeah. New Jersey and we never saw each other as competition ever. Exactly. You're my brother from another mother. We joke about it, right? but yeah. that's the truth. It's like, how could I make sure that Bud and his team are taken care of? Yeah. yeah absolutely, man. That's great. So next question then, what are the tools that you use to keep you on track? One thing about real estate and just being an entrepreneur is the shiny object syndrome, right? Yeah. There's so many tools out there. I, I'm going to speak like an old timer now and say, I wish it was like the good old days where it was only one thing, which is like a journal or yeah. like a calendar book that you carry. With the amount of abundance of tools out there, I actually don't have a particular one. What I look at is, does it carry over into different platforms? So for example, I have an iMac. Is it going to carry over onto my MacBook Pro or my iPhone? So yeah. it, and for me, it's really the calendar. It's time management is the most important thing for me, but it's not really time management. It's task management. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at it a little bit different. So I use the most basic stuff, nothing that's going to cost me money. I use the calendars that are available on our phones, mm -hmm. computers, and everything like that. Why? Because they're always going to be available. The software is not always going to be available. Sometimes they might change their mind and then close down shop. Right? Yeah. So you want it to be always available so that you're not lost in the sauce later on down the road this is going back right but <laughs> what's one thing you would change if you had to start over oh man multifamily i wish i would have started a multifamily a lot sooner the area house was a single family um, which is great but if i lost the income of that one person that's renting out the property i lost 100 percent of my income i would have started with commercial multifamily at the very minimum residential, you know, two to four units so that I can mitigate my risk of mm -hmm. vacancy and being able to not lose half of my income or the whole income pretty much. So the more doors, the more risk mitigation. And if I lose one door on a five unit, that's only a fifth, right? So I'm not really worried, but if I lose one door on a one door, then it's a hundred percent of my income. So. <laughs> 
But yeah, that's the worst, man. I've been there and it sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> it's, not, it's not fun. No, Absolutely. not at all. Not at all. Good day, High Flyers. Do you need help with your business? We can help you get out of a jam or even get you started in real estate. Check us out at BudEvans.com. Are you ready to take your real estate investment sky high? Aim High REI is the perfect Facebook community for you. Get answers from experienced investors, connect with other motivated individuals, and benefit from valuable resources all in one place. If that sounds like something that interests you, join our amazing network today and we will help elevate your investing journey beyond what you think is possible. Simply search Aim High REI on Facebook. Thanks. Now back to the show. All right. So Yasser, if someone wanted to reach out to you directly or be a part of Coffee with the Captain, how would they do that? I'm always looking for amazing people. Part of the requirements, not anybody could join Coffee with the Captain. So I always do a one-on-one -on -one interview with them just to kind of see where they're at, where they've been, what kind of superpowers and all that, and you know that they have you know, their strengths and their weaknesses and what their goals are. And ultimately it comes down to, I want to see if they're a go-getter, right? Someone that's out there to be able to help other people out as well, while also receiving the benefits of being part of a community. To be able to reach us, you reach me personally on in all these social medias is the handle is I am the property captain. I am the property captain and the coffee with the captain can be found on coffee.thepropertycaptain.com. That's how you can sign up. You'll be able to check out and also schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me so that we could talk and see how we could get you part of the tribe. Outstanding. And then provide value to one another, right? Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Okay. This will all be in the description below. Yasser, thank you very much, buddy. I really do appreciate this. It's been a long time. I know you're in training and whatnot. It took us almost what, a month and a half to schedule this. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been in the making, but hey, done is better than perfect and eventually it gets done, right? So we're here yeah. and I'm thankful for having me on here with you. Again, I can't thank you enough. My brother from another mother, I will talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, thank you very much for your time today. Until next we meet, aim high. Adios. Hey, just a reminder, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want some more real estate and finance related videos, you can check out our other videos right here. And as always, aim high.